All right, now we come to the exciting part, which is the actual joint rigging workflow. So here is the lamp, the way we have left it at the end of the second video. And the first joint I'm going to add is between this base, which is static. We didn't add a rigid body to it just to show how we're going to joint static things. And this here part. Uh, you can see that uh, this part is aligned with its Z axis where we want to create a hinge as is this one. So actually here the selection order should not matter, but I'm going to control click to select both of these things. And then let me just use the create menu right now because it's a bit clearer. I'm going to do physics joint. And then this is a revolute joint. That's the technical term for hinge. So I create it and you can see this circle is the axis around which it's going to rotate around. That's not correct. We need it to be the blue axis. The blue axis you can see here is the Z axis. So we just set this to Z and that changes the plane of the rotation axis and we don't need to move it. So now let's, let's pretend I would need to move it. Then I can just use these gizmos and move it. And now of course the whole thing is going to rotate around this axis. We don't want that. I'm going to undo that move. Remember, if you need to precisely place something, then you can use these orthographic views. I want to point out that in this particular build, uh, this release build that we're using, the orthographic views don't work. They're broken for some reason. Um, but because it's going to be important for us to be able to use the orthographic views anyway, especially this front view, we're going to quickly work around that. So one thing you can do is you can do create camera from view. Honestly, it doesn't matter which layer you do this in because it's uh, it's just a temporary workaround. So it creates this camera. It's still not working. Uh, what I found you can do is you can set this to perspective and just um, undo also these um, these settings. And you might also need to rename the camera like camera side. And then it starts working. You, you saw that after the rename, it kind of like... Uh, you know, it, 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 the viewport jumped. And now I can actually focus in on things like, uh, like the different parts, like when I press F and now you can actually position things precisely. So you have that side view camera, you can delete it once you're done. Let's go back to the perspective view for now and uh, continue the joint tutorial. Now uh, it's important to realize that the joint not only can it be named in any way, but it's important to put it somewhere. So what I like to do is to put all of the joints in uh, their own group. So we're going to create a scope, name the scope something like joints, uh, move the joint into this scope, and then you can uh, Rename this to something like this in like that. So let me show you how joint breaking works in our editor. You might uh, either accidentally or deliberately move one of the parts that you have already jointed together like this base joint transform. So let's just move it. And you notice when I stop moving it, this joint visualization gets this red circle here. And that means that the joint is unhappy and broken and it's not going to simulate very well. Where are we? So select the joint. It has two relative transforms, the position of the joint relative to one of the bodies and relative to the other bodies. That's um, one of them is represented by this straight frame without arrows and the other is represented by this straight frame without arrows. You notice that these were exactly overlapping before I moved this away, but now they are not. And when they become disconnected like this, um, the simulator will try to snap them together as soon as I simulate, but that's, that's like usually not the behavior you want. So you just snap together, but uh, when I stop it, it's, it's again apart because I move them apart. So, Assuming you don't want the snapping behavior, you want this frame to realign with that frame. What you need to do is realize that body one is, is this guy. So it's base joint transform. So 
its uh, local position frame is now basically wrong. It's over here, but it needs to go back to over there. So we have a command here. You right click for this context menu and you say align position to body one. And that's going to snap the frame back over here. Uh, now, when you simulate, uh, first of all, the red circle disappeared, but now if you simulate, this guy is offset and it's going to rotate or orbit like this, which is uh, presumably what you wanted and that's why you moved the object. Let's say you don't want this after all, probably the best way to undo it here is to go back here and um, um, actually probably I can just do a sequence of undos to undo the motion. There we go. And now I also realign it here. Maybe another important thing to point out regarding joint visualization is if you have a lot of joints and you guys don't want to see this uh, here, then you can just go physics and untick joints over here. And you see the the selected joints like, you know, movement uh, arc and so on are still shown, but this, uh, this billboard is not shown anymore. So that, uh, that can give you less clutter, but actually right now I want it, so I'm going to leave it on. All right, so let's now continue to rig up the other joints. I'll try to move quickly from here on. This is going to be the first dynamic dynamic joint we're going to create. Let's do this one. So there's here uh, basically a double arm and a single arm, and they're moving sort of in parallel. And let's do the single arm first. It's, it's jointed here to, to this guy, and you can see that its um, origin is aligned correctly uh, with the joint axis that we want to have. So I should select the second because it's the second one whose axis the joint is going to inherit. So I select this guy, then I control click to select this guy. And then I can do create physics joint revolute joint. Um, the axis is set correctly. It's this uh, plane that we're looking at, that's good. And uh, then uh, let's, re let's rename it. Actually, let's uh, parent it here and name this like um, lower hinge. Let's call it lower hinge for consistency. And then click this first, click this second. Again, do like create physics joint revolute joint. This guy again places the hinge axis perfectly because uh, the origin was set up cleverly. I don't need to change the axis. That's cool. Um, then we have this kind of spring element here again. This is nicely aligned. We want to have this joint. So uh, let's do this first, this second. Also. Good. So now you guys can see we have four different ones. I can quickly see if they simulate correctly. So yes, this guy is swinging around and this guy swings properly and this guy swings properly too. Great. Now there is this guy here. Again, axis set where we want to have the joint and it's connected to the double arm. So select these two guys. Axis is correct. Good. Now let's see, this guy is attached here now, but the two hinges are not attached together yet. Maybe let's do that now. So, so it doesn't really matter which order I select it. Um, yeah, let's just create here uh, a prismatic joint is a slider joint. So that's going to slide in and out. Now, what axis do we want it to be? Definitely not the red X axis. Uh, we could again go for the Z axis, which is the blue one. But now I'm going to have to rotate this frame for this hinge so that it will align to the slider axis. So I can do that maybe like this. Should be approximately okay. And I could also move it now. Uh, note that this is moving uh, with the local frame. 
and this is this is kind of a, an okay position. This along this this axis it doesn't need to be positioned, you know, particularly perfectly. Let's pretend this is the middle. Again, I can go to my side camera to inspect it for for good placement. I think that's fine. Go back to perspective. This guy is going to if I simulate it then it's going to slide apart. So we need it to have a little bit of stiffness to try and hold itself up. We, need, we want to limit it. We want to limit its motion. I think the best thing is to limit it so that it's not able to move at all. And that should just hold the thing in place completely. See, it's like a very stiff spring. And now it, it's just like, it's it's holding it together. It's not able to move along this axis. It's like a fixed joint. But then we make it springy. So we make the stiffness. It's usually like a pretty high value. Now. Oh, I don't know, 10,000. Let's see if that's a good starting value. And uh, maybe that's too much. Yeah, this is too little. So you have to kind of experiment, like keep adding zeros until it stays up. Okay, so this, this looks good now. And you can see that it's not dampened at all. So it, it keeps oscillating. So you can try to do damping, which is like generally similar or like, yeah, okay, this is over damped. So now it's again, like not strong enough. So one less zero. Unfortunately, there isn't like a much faster way to do this that I found. Okay, so now the, the 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 jiggling should die out, and I think this is like a relatively accurate representation of what these lamps work. Plus, like now it's still going to have all the rest of the weight, so it's not really worth it to tune it completely yet. Let's just keep going and add the rest of the stuff here. So I'm I'm just gonna change the side camera here because it's getting a little bit involved. So now we have this guy and you can see there's a joint here that we want to add between this and control click this guy. Perfect by default. Let's see what that does. You can obviously simulate in this side view as well. Yeah, it's properly attached. Now we want it to attach here to this guy. And this is going to be, again, tricky manual placement because now we've already kind of utilized the origin of both of these objects somewhere else. So we now need to do a manual placement. So we just do uh, create joint revolute. And it's not placed well, we want it right here. And again, test, and yeah, now you can see all three arms are lined up. Good. Now, let's see. Okay, this is again easy because this guy has the origin here, so let's make it be the second object. And again, important to always simulate because if something bad happens, you want to be able to notice. So I'm, I'm a little annoyed that it's like spinning around like this, but we can just damp out that, uh, that may add a little friction to this joint and it should be fine. And this guy just dropped to the bottom and that's, that's fine. That's actually working well. So now we come to this connecting piece. Okay, this has the origin in the right place. So this, oh, I'm, I'm forgetting to like parent uh, the joints and to rename them. So I'll just do that in a sec. Now let's simulate. We just added this one without trying it. And yep, that has that thing just uh, hanging there. That's good. Now this side. So I could joint this either to this body or this body, but closer to the root is in general a better idea. 
uh, if you're, we keep getting lucky with the axis defaulting correctly. Yep. Okay. Now we need to have the slider joint here between these two guys. Physics joint, prismatic joint. This is surprisingly okay here. I, I guess I could even leave it if I really wanted to, as long as I use the green axis now as its axis. I'm gonna still move it to the middle here so it's better visible. But uh, the green axis is the Y axis. And then similarly, how we did it with the lower spring, I'm going to limit this to be completely shut first. Uh, so let's see what that does. Yep, that just basically prevents all, almost all movement. It's like a very stiff spring. And I want to make it maybe a little bit more springy. So here under advanced settings, what was it that we used for the other one? So the bottom spring prismatic was like 1010. So we'll try the same values here. A thousand and ten. Yeah, okay, smoother movement. It could use a little bit more damping. And now again, we don't have a convenient frame, so it doesn't matter what order we select. This is not good at all. Let's see. Yeah, it's gonna be Y axis and move it. Move it here. This and this. Move it here. Let's place it as accurately as possible. Okay. Let's see if they stay jointed now. Ooh. Oh, did I forget? I forgot to add a joint there, didn't I? Yeah. See, this is why you simulate all the time because once you add too many, you're just kind of like, yeah, okay, exactly like this. This is the one we're missing. Physics joint. Right. Oh, it's, it's, it's defaulting poorly now. Why exactly? So let's see. Yep, we have the arm motion there. Okay, we had that intermediate body, didn't we? That tiny one that annoyed us at the beginning of the tutorial. And you know what? Honestly, I'm not even sure if it's really needed, but uh, let's just use it. Where is it? How can I pick it? Yes, here we go. This is this is the guy. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure it's still there. It's so tiny we can't even see it properly. And now this one, I think the idea is here that this lamp can now tilt from side to side. And then the one we're about to add is then going to be the lampshade second hinge. And it's going to be between the lampshade and the, let's say this guy. Joint, revolute joint. Okay, but now this one is going to have to be around the green Y axis. Yes, like that. Not very creative on the naming. All right, so you can see the lamp is rigged. It's just very, um, very soft. Tuning springs like vehicle suspensions can be difficult and will likely deserve its own guide. There is definitely a lot of trial and error involved. 